What is up guys, Cards Across Texas here today and we made it out to the Houston Auto Show for Media Day. Got my media pass right there looking real fancy. Um, but I'm actually currently on break between two classes. So I've gotten about an hour and 15 minutes to get this video banged out. So I apologize if it seems a little rushed. But I'm also soaked because it's been pouring down rain in Houston all day today and I have to walk like two miles from my parking spot to my first class. So Let's hurry up and make this show worth it. There's a lot of cool stuff here, including the new uh, Mustang Mach-E, which will be pretty cool to see in person. Pretty polarizing car, but I do believe that if they change the name to just the Ford Mach-E, it'd be a lot more positively received. Without further ado, let's just go jumping into the show real quick. Let's check out all the cars here, and uh, let me know what your favorite car is in the show and what you're excited to see on the roads in 2020. All right, let's get to it, guys. All right, and as we come straight into the uh, the gates, we get the Ford Mustang Mach-E here. I'm gonna make a whole separate look around on this video because it's the new thing, and uh, I think it gets a lot of unnecessary hate. So be on the lookout for that video. I'm sure there'll be more details there, but for now, enjoy this quick little look at the car. Oh baby, the new GT500, so aggressive. This car is sick. I don't care what any of y'all say about the rod knock videos that they've posted. Uh, this car is insane looking very aggressive and it really lo rocks this like gray on black look Very aggressive looking car big old aero kit front like lip and everything the side skirts are huge And you got the wing in the back as well uh, If I had 120 or so thousand dollars or however much these are going for now I would 100% get one because I've seen dyno videos already of these cars with like a pulley in E85 making like 850 plus horsepower. So I'm sure we'll see one of these in the eight second range in the quarter mile pretty soon. Just maybe with a uh, couple more bolt-ons and stuff, we might be able to see a low nine. So definitely keep this car in mind guys because this is going to hurt some feelings on the street and on the track. We got the adrenaline yellow C8 Corvette here. I almost did it, almost went and got one. But just being the first of everything, first C8, first mid-engine mid vet, first dual clutch trains from Trimic, I just had a lot of things to be worried about with getting this car. But it does look really good in yellow, the little wing there. This car is a much different spec than what we saw at Parkway Chevrolet. But I honestly kind of like this one better. Got the yellow brakes on the yellow, and then the whole stitching is all yellow, the whole interior, pardon me, is all yellow stitching with yellow seat belts. Very nice. Now a big trend in the automotive scene that I've been kind of noticing lately, that I actually really kind of like the direction, is, I mean, with the introduction of the Jeep track clock, then we had like the Range Rover SVR, we also have a bunch of other performance SUVs, everybody's kind of jumping in this game now. We got Jaguar over here taking from, I guess, the SVR lineage because the F-Pace is actually on the same chassis as I believe the Velar is, so it's not quite the Sport SVR, but they took the F-Pace and they made an F-Pace SVR, which I'm pretty sure still has a supercharged V8 in it, quad tip exhaust. It looks pretty good. I'm sure it sounds amazing like every other SVR car. Uh, I, I really do enjoy the direction the automotive scene is kind of going with these performance SUVs. You can go fast with the whole family, you can go fast to the grocery store. It kind of adds like a little spice to your everyday life and it makes the uh, speed a little bit more achievable for more people. Bro, is that a Supra? Wouldn't be a complete show around the auto show <laughs> if we uh, didn't show off the Mark V Supra here in yellow. You're good bro, you're good. So this car does look really good in the yellow color on the red brakes. Uh, I always like seeing cars in some slightly different color options than what we normally see on the road, like the white and the black. So, also, very good looking. Uh, first year model, it's sixty-five thousand dollars more coverage. The original price is fifty-seven. It was sixty-five to one hundred grand more to get this vehicle first year. And oh my god! And they're still buying them anyway. Yeah, yeah. Sheesh. I don't know if I'd pay that much over sticker for the new Supra. He was just telling me sixty-five to hundred thousand dollar markups on the first years. I did. I, I had actually didn't really pay much attention to these, but they're growing on me. Rest assured, I do like them a little bit more every time I see one. Can't wait for the big turbo kits to come out for these, and we can actually see some fast ones. If I'm gonna be real honest with you, Toyota just coming out here. They're killing the game. This is a good-looking, like performance TRD Camry or something. 
This thing looks good. The wheels are sick. Those are just from the factory like that. Yeah, TRD Camry. This thing's pretty sick. Got the wing on it. The body kit red on the black roof. The interior is pretty nice. I, I like it. Toyota making money moves over here. Bro, why haven't I seen this anywhere on like Instagram or anything? I have not seen a single post about this. But it looks like Land Rover is coming out with a new Defender model. Okay. Got Defender written big on there, just like every one of the older ones. Base model Defender starting at $49,000. As it's shown here, it says $86,770. So I'd assume there's a lot of options that you can get on this car. Oh, look, is that like wood or something? This is nice as heck. I didn't know they were coming out with a new Defender. This is really awesome. The back looks sick too. I actually really like this. I keep, I feel like I keep saying I really like uh, a lot of the stuff here, but I, I genuinely do. I feel like the automotive direction a lot of these manufacturers are going is a good one. We'll complete with the digital dash there. That's sick. So we're gonna hop in the new Defender here. As shown, $86,000, but one can be had with relatively low miles, or low options, pardon me, for $49,000. Digital dash, that's sick. The whole nice little infotainment system. Roomy enough back seats back here. This is a really, really nice. Now I hope with Jaguar, I hope what they did with this is they up updated that awful, awful, system that they had in place here for this screen in the middle it's super nice actually all right Nissan's kind of uh, going towards the direction of like if there's an apocalypse going on look at this rig what the heck you got a place to set up your tent on top tons of gas cans destination frontier it pretty much just made like the ultimate off-roading Nissan here and I mean out of all the cars here if um, the end of times was coming this would be my choice. All right, here we go. I have something negative to say now. Now, I actually don't mind the Z platform. A lot of people lately especially have been jumping on the bandwagon about how bad the VQ motor sounds, but this is a really good looking car. Don't get me wrong. This car has been being made since 2009 though without a single exterior revision. Literally the same exact looking car that you can get in 2009. Aside from adding the Nismo package to it a few years after, I just, I don't see the appeal of getting a 2019, 2023 70Z for 40, 50K. Hey, what's up? 40, 50K. Or you could get like a 2009, 2010, 2011 370Z for 20K, maybe less. Hey, it's, it's high-tech Corvette, but this isn't, it's not a Corvette. Oh, it's high-tech Porsche now. Yes. He's changed, he's, he's rebranded. He's checked, uh, checking out the Taken. We saw this at Porsche North Houston the other day. It is absolutely awesome. But I like the spec a lot more than the one we got to see at North Houston. It's like a baby blue. This thing is sick. It kind of looks like the Aston Martin DBS Superleger from the back. But, just so you don't get it mistaken, it says Porsche real big across the light bar. Very nice. Hopping in the Taken with a high-tech Corvette here. Ooh, carbon fiber wheels, okay. Very nice. Whoa, look at So we're here in the new Porsche taken with Mike from High Tech Corvette. And you got the whole glass roof up here. All of the glass. That's, that's really sick. You want yeah. all the natural light in a Porsche. It's a nice luxury to have. It's a very good looking car. The Alcantara uh, steering wheel is really nice because when you live in Houston it gets really, really hot and your hands get, your hands, your hands get clammy. And when you have Alcantara, it actually helps with the gripping uh, big time. And you gotta remember that this thing also kind of rolls out. So this is one of those sh shots across Elon Musk bow by the, by the Germans. Yes, good, sir. Good job, Zafosha. Yeah. <laughs> Danke. Oh my God, I can't believe it was hitting the tank here. And in this car you got screens, mm -hmm. on screens. All the screens. On screens. Look at that. It's Look at all these screens. You have, uh. You have so it's many. It's like loading up, it's like windows. There's so much stuff for activities in here. Dude, I bet there's gonna be some sort of like mod soon for this car. You, your passenger can watch TV up here. It'd be kind of sick. 
I'm really glad to see some automotive manufacturers stepping up to Tesla and being like, hey, we're willing to challenge you. The screen look back here looks sick. All sorts of buttons inside. Got taken right there, written real big. This whole infotainment system super nice, but at the end of the day, it's still electric for me. And I, I like I said with the Mustang Mach E, I, I'm not there on electric cars yet because I want a little bit of soul. I want a car that makes a little noise. I want a car that's just, it's a car, I mean. I don't know, maybe I'll grow on the electric cars soon. Here we got a brand that I feel like goes pretty under, under recognized. After they split off from uh, Hyundai, they just made Genesis a separate division of Hyundai, and they have been killing the game on designing these like big luxury sedans and stuff. A lot of people, a lot of y'all probably recognize the Genesis Coupe, but look at this full-size luxury sedan here that looks really good, and the interior is also super nice. Diamond stitching in here and everything. Look at that. You don't think you don't think Genesis when you think of like super high-end luxury, but I mean, I'm telling you, they're killing the game. And that big chrome grill screams rich, man. They're coming after you, BMW. And then over here on the far end of the show, we got Lamborghini Houston, McLaren Houston, Rolls Royce Houston, and Porsche North Houston, showing out with a couple of their cars. Uh, Indigo Auto Group, because there's Porsche already here, they only brought out the McLarens and the Lambos, but they brought out the whole fleet to show off what they got. This year, a spec is really sick. We got the all red Huracan Evo, the McLaren GT. I actually really, really like this car, and 10 times out of 10, I'm taking this over a Bentley. Okay, I actually really like this new Vantage with the GT4 Aero Kit. Got the big carbon fiber lip up front, and we got the wing in the back. Good looking. They chose a pretty classic Aston Martin color combo for it, the uh, sort of British green on yellow combo. Proper. Y'all did good showing this one off, guys. Thumbs up to Aston Martin. And this paint is sick on this DBS Superleggera Volante. It's like a color shift thing. It's like pearl, it has like a gold flake to it on the green paint. This is a, and the interior looks sick too. That stitching in there, oh my God. Aston Martin coming out strong at the auto show. They have like 10 cars here. <laughs> All right, Dodge coming out with their whole fleet of wide body cars. You got the wide body Scat Pack Challenger, the wide body Scat Pack Charger. Then up here, the wide body Hellcat Charger just came out. This thing looks mean, but I don't know if I'd pay $80,000 for it new. Once they start hitting the used market, maybe, but not yet. And then we got the wide body Hellcat Red Eye here. Very aggressive looking with the double hood vents right there. I still just kind of like the Charger a little better because you can go fast with the boys. Well, as you know, this is our newest vehicle in the lineup. So it's our 2022 Gladiator Rubicon. Uh, we do have a little bit higher ground clearance than the Wrangler because they're going to come with a factory one inch lift. So it brings our ground clearance to 11.1 .1 versus 10.8. Also comes standard with 33s and Fox shocks, so it's going to help for a little bit of a smoother ride as well. So the cool things with the Gladiator is you have the optional forward facing trail cam now as well. So you can see what's in front of you if you're rock on or whatever. And then there's that little clean camera button down there as well, so it'll shoot water up and actually clean the camera for you. Yeah. This is about 30 degrees for the entire thing. We'll probably hit around 22 to 25. But we do have a really low center of gravity, which is why we're able to do stuff like this and not flip over. Yeah. Oh no, you can sit there and shake it all day. It's not going anywhere next time. And that's true for all of the trail running vehicles. They all have a really low center of gravity, so. We're keeping it right around 1500 RPM all the way up to 35 degrees. Wow. <laughs> and we do have that uh, hill descent button as well, so if we were to use that, it just uses your ABS system and your transmission together to help slow you down. Uh, so you just shift up or shift down to gain or lose speed if you have that activated. And one of the things you're only going to get on the Rubicon is our electronic sway bar disconnect. Um, and that's the touch of a button now, you don't have to manually do it anymore, it's all high-powered magnets. 
but that's what's going to keep all four of our tires on the ground going over this breakover. So we're going to get about 30% more wheel travel when that feature is on. We just got off that Jeep Gladiator little ride around the uh, Camp Jeep track. That thing is sick and there's a ton of features that I didn't know about in that car. So, that was really cool to get explained all that stuff. And uh, onward, now we continue our tour around the auto show. So, at some shows, y'all might have seen that rainbow chrome Corvette here. New wrap for the boy. And he has his big ol' a and centrifugal supercharger blower out here for all to see. This car sounds insane and looks insane as well. This crazy livery and the big old wing with a Bruce Lee quote on the side. And we also got Hennessy's booth with the Velociraptor here. Another Velociraptor V8 car. We got a GMC Yukon here. A Denali, sorry. GMC Denali. Looks supercharged. And over here we got the Tuner School Supra and the HPE 1000 new GT500. Dude, I'm telling you, these cars are gonna be nuts once people start modifying them. Oh my God, check out the C6 Z06 with the big old high-rise intake in there and a, looks to be a big old Pro Charger on this side. Yes, sir. Sheesh. Look at that. This car probably makes like 1,300 horsepower or more. Some nitrous sauce bottles in the back. Oh, 1,500 horsepower, there we go. GM Performance LSX blocks, 427 with the big old Pro Charger, the high-rise intake. This car is insane. The big old tire in the back, the slicks and skinnies on it. Sheesh. We got tire 59 here showing out with some expensive cars on some nice wheels. A lot of Ferratas here. Looks like an AMG GT63 Designo Blue Ferrata wheels. Aston Martin on some Ferrata wheels. A Huracan, again, on Ferratas. And then a Supra, also on Ferrata wheels. You got the whole selection back here as well. Ooh, I think I like these right here. What y'all think, next car? Those are pretty sick. I like those a whole lot. I also like those, but um, those are custom forged and they're very expensive. <laughs> then can't forget the M850i on some Ferrata wheels. These things are pretty sick. I haven't seen too many of them out yet, but they sound good, pretty quick, and very nice interiors. Then right next to the Tire 59 booth we have, uh, it looks like Yolo Lambo's booth with his Louis Vuitton SV, his matte black squadra course. Then a 600LT and 720S over there. Very nice. Alrighty guys, and as we make our way back over to the Ford booth where we all started today, we are greeted by a very nicely spec Ford GT here. Um, let's take a look around that. And then it's time for me to skedaddle. I got class in like 30 minutes. So I need to get back because I have to walk across campus anyways once I park really up. But hopefully you enjoyed this very rushed walk around of the Houston Auto Show. Check out that, looks like a Grabber Blue. It's a super nice carbon fiber stripe. It's definitely one of the Ford GT lightweight editions, carbon fiber wheels, all that stuff. Very, very good looking car right here. All right guys, we're making our way out of the auto show now. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. Let me know what your favorite car is that you're excited to see on the road for 2020. And uh, it's time to make my way back out in the cold and the rain to get to school. But see you in the next video guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. Leave me a like, leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought. And uh, see you in the next video guys.